time favorite FPS is Doom, that's easy. Doom just hit like a freight train. When I played it, I just remember thinking, wow. Playing that network was just mind blowing. It's fast, it's violent, it's kinetic. Doom was such a statement that this is something different. It is the foundational DNA from which everything descends. I still think people will be playing it 20, 30 years from now. Great game design never goes out of style. This is Doom. No, this is the renaissance. This is the renaissance. And I just kept saying it over and over like a madman. Doom is eternal. <laughs>we put out this press release in January before we even started programming the thing saying this is going to be the biggest PC breakthrough ever this game when it comes out and we didn't even know when it was going to come out unbelievable like no one would ever do that now John Carmack spent several months with a post Wolfenstein technology that he had developed and he decided like we can't use a 2D matrix to make a next gen really cool looking game it'll be too Wolfenstein like I remember as a teenager when uh, Steve Jobs had left Apple, and of course, Jobs and Wozniak were superheroes to me in my youth, being an Apple II fanboy and all this, and seeing the, the drama of Steve Jobs uh, being kicked out of Apple and going to found a new company, building this absolutely state-of-the-art system. In the spring of 1985, he lost a power struggle inside Apple and left the company he had created. He spent the summer considering his next move. In 1988, we have developed supercomputers that are capable of performing 2 billion calculations per second. But it was $10,000 plus. At that time, I couldn't even afford $300 for a hard drive. But once we got to the point where Commander Keen was doing quite well, Wolfenstein 3D was ready to go out, it looked like we had traction, we were heading towards success. I had $15,000 or something uh, available to me, and I went and I bought one of the next computers. Two billion calculations per second. Second, second. It was a great example of just being excited about technology leading us to some tools that helped us make significantly better products for a couple generations after. I immediately knew when Doom came out that I needed to get into the gaming industry. The advances just in one year that they did. They had ceilings and floors, steps you could go up and down. It's just amazing. I had been working on the Doom editor for a while, making little pieces of levels and really Tom Hall full on making stuff, like making levels, not even full levels, but just like, you know, trying to make something that was cool. And because we had never seen anything other than 90 degree wall mazes with fixed height ceilings, John, said, why don't you get books on military construction and use that as a guide to figuring out the spaces. So Tom did that even though it wasn't what he really loved. My vision for the whole arc of the game was you are in sort of a science base on a moon and then you go through a portal for the second episode and you're in hell. I'd add like realistic kind of senses of place. Like, oh, now I'm in, you know, the control room or, you know, I'm here and so I can get my bearings. Tom was going through these military books and starting to make some levels like that. Nothing interesting, nothing that when you go through it goes, wow, this is amazing. And so I told Tom, I'm going to try and figure out if I can like come up with the look. Like, what is it that we're doing? If a room could have been made in Wolfenstein, we failed. So we need to just like change everything. What's gonna really stand out? To me, it felt like it was gonna be contrast. Contrast in light, contrast in space, and contrast in gameplay. 
I started to make a room that had scale that was like, forget that ceiling that we were using for Wolfenstein. So I made a room that was really high, side areas that were really high up that had light in them and really bright. So the room's dark. These really high bright areas have monsters up there throwing fireballs down at you. So we're not on the same plane being attacked, but I needed the player to see it because it would look really cool to see something that high up. I had the light going and the monsters and the scale, angled walls, all these things that like, this room could not exist in Wolfenstein. So I was very happy that I was able to make something that was both uh, faster and in some ways higher quality by making a slightly different set of trade-offs while still getting all this new flexibility with the angled walls, which really defined the Doom map making space. So the artist came in and Tom came in and they're just like, yeah, that's what we're talking about. And like, that's how we need to make this game. Doom is as much of a horror game as it is an action game. It scared me. It, it actually had moments in it that would make you jump. We always talked about how the two cinematic influences for Doom was Aliens and Evil Dead 2. They were about these moments where the lights are flickering, you can't see what's going on, something's coming out of the darkness at you. And that was what we we really wanted to capture. When I was coming up with a style, I wanted something that was different from what you generally saw in video games at the time, which was pretty clean, bright colors, and I wanted something dark and grungy. That was the grunge era. Music, the clothes, everything. <laughs> I want to hear the monsters, not just hear the doors. I want to hear them looking for us. I want the player to be terrified. This is a dark game. There needs to be suspense with diminished lighting going from bright to dark automatically in the distance. It's like automatic scary engine. You'd be going around the corner and then you hear like some monster breathing or something and you, you know, it gets to you. You're very alert. You're very um, on edge the whole time you're playing. So when I was making E1M3, I got all the way to the very end. I'm like, what am I going to do at the very end? Like put the exit there? No. I think we should make the player go back through the whole level. When they see the key card, it would be boring. If you go up to it and you pick it up, everything's dead. All the way back through the level. Everything's already been killed. So it's like, how do I like terrify the player right then? Lighting was a super critical aspect of the technical evolution of our products from Wolfenstein, where everything was all kind of fully lit. For Doom, what was really critical is we could change the lighting dynamically. So all of the things that people still resonate with, like the flickering lights going on, those were very, very powerful. I thought, why don't I hide a bunch of demons in a room and turn the lights out when they go to pick up the card? And when they pick up the card, it opens the door. People played it, they were just like, what? You know? You don't have to have a deep story to a game but you can frame the action with just a couple sentences, right? Something messed up happened. So now as you're going through all the jump scares and crazy action, you have a reason you're going there and you're getting more and more dread as you go there. The environmental effects were great. Sometimes you're in a brightly lit room and then all of a sudden you're just walking in the darkness. And it's just scary as hell. It's great making people jump. You're running around this massive, sprawling, hellish environment. And so the lights were part of that. I mean, that was essential to a lot of what made it so scary. Those were some of the moments in Doom that, you know, made people's guts clench and really made a difference. The boss level of the first episode, e one m 8 that was made by Sandy. A lot of the things that I put into my levels were things to make you scared. So we're like, let's make two bosses <laughs> and make the Baron of Hell just has a ton of hit points. Like they need to be a tank. For many hours into the game, you've got your instincts ready. And then to hear that sort of T-Rex roar. Oh shit, I'm in for it now. And you hit them with rockets and they're just coming towards you. They just keep coming. When you get to uh, E2M8, you are seeing Barons of Hell just destroyed hanging on the wall. And you're like, what did that? Of course, when you walk into the uh, back area, suddenly you hear the cyber demon roar. That sound, that machine sound, stomping around. Go oh, shit. And then you know you're in for it. 
We like scary games. We like having something that um, makes you jump, makes you feel alive. Even if you're out of ammo and you're down to nothing but brass knuckles, you're gonna punch those demons in the face. So you're gonna do anything you can. I mean, who goes around punching demons in the face? Well, I'll never forget that. For me, I love the shotgun. Boom. Fires at 187 beats per minute. I clocked it with a metronome once. When you shoot a shotgun, then you have the animation of it going up and cocking like this, and you feel really manly, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, because that's a manly thing to do. Kevin created all the weapons, and John had this video camera, and we used props. You just hold the gun up in front of the camera and get that perspective. I would say the chainsaw is pretty fun. He doesn't like that. Ladies and gentlemen, the Doom Chainsaw. This is the actual chainsaw that we digitized for the game. I felt that I should keep the grunge on it that it had back in the day. So it just got that you know, nasty look to it and here it is. I just remember the first time I heard about the BFG my friend's dad, who installed it on his computer, then he said, oh, there's this gun in the game that just obliterates everything. It's called the BFG. And then the dad goes, you know what that stands for? And we're like, what? Big fucking gun. And I'm like, oh shit, your dad's cool. <laughs> I remember the BFG, we're trying to decide what it's gonna shoot. So John Romero set it up where it just shot every sprite in the game. Like just these balls of colorfulness going everywhere. It's like, oh my God, it's vomiting Christmas. So then Kevin just sat down and drew a nice green fireball that you see now. What really made Doom was the whole game. The fact that it had those really awesome levels great gameplay, and of course, how well the net play worked. Um, oh shit, it's October and we don't have multiplayer like we said in that press release. I was like, all right, well, now we're starting on multiplayer, you know, in October. I do clearly remember the early days of getting multiplayer working at all on Doom. This game's already great, but that's like the next level. I remember the magic of that moment of just like pressing the arrow keys on one computer, it moving forward, and then on the other computer, watching the victor's feet run back and forth in front of you there. This is just deeply fundamentally cool. Seeing that for the first time on a screen, I was just like, this is so good. I would play Romero and he gets so damn mad at me because he would run around and collect all the damn weapons and then i just run forward with the rocket launcher and just get in his face and kill us both. <laughs> I'm the reason you get a negative frag if you go up and <laughs> kill yourself. <laughs> Stupid shit. Watch him die, he's dead. It's one of my biggest contributions to the gameplay. Oh, bits. oh give me that shotgun, boy. <laughs> we want this to be like a thing that you, know, you go to this number and you win. Or you go to this time and whoever has the biggest score wins, that kind of thing. So I came up with those parameters immediately and then I was like, what am I going to have on the screen? We're doing so much new stuff in this game that kills would be a stupid word to use. But I went into the art room and I said, so I named this mode Deathmatch and every time you kill each other, you get a point. What do you think would be a good name for that? Because I don't want to use kills because that's lame. Kevin thought for a second and he's just like, why not use frag? Yeah, I've never actually beaten Doom in single player mode. It was exclusively multiplayer. I guess there's people that have dropped out of college for it too, so I feel bad about that. Early on, even when we were doing the Commander Keen games, it was clear we're small fry. But by the time we got to Doom, it was clear that we were defining the state of the art. We were doing something like nobody had ever seen before, and we knew it was going to be a big deal. The very end of Doom, we had worked 30 hours straight. We were at the end. Sandy was asleep under his desk. It was about two in the afternoon. Jay is in his office and the biz is the biz room. He's on the University of Wisconsin's FTP server. People are sitting there waiting in that directory and they're creating files that are like questions. When is Doom gonna be here? I want Doom. Jay went to, to basically upload the game and then more people flooded in because they, they saw like it was happening. The server just basically blew up and stopped working. 
And so the, the upload stops and Jay gets on the phone. He calls him up and uh, the guy's name is David Data, which is funny. Calls up David there and he's just like, um, server went down, like there's too many people on it. And, and David's like, okay, let me see if I can fix it. I'm gonna clear everybody out. So he clears people out and we start uploading and then everyone rushes back in <laughs> and it blows up again. And so we're just like, oh my God. I think Doom is, you know, clearly one of the best games ever made. Doom is popular for two things. One is the primal nature of taking a gun and shooting demons, which is obviously super fun. The other is that Doom hasn't added any other storyline or anything onto it. It is pretty much just taking your gun and shooting demons and solving simple puzzles. Here was a game that had blood and had heavy metal and had, you know, these monsters and dark humor. So when you start to put your life to that, to such a degree, and you start finding other people who are into it, it becomes a part of a growing up experience. Microsoft had done a study that showed that more computers at the time had Doom installed on them than the latest version of Windows. The community has kept Doom alive this whole time. There are yearly awards given out to people for the best levels and the best content released by uh, doomworld.com, which has been around for 20 some years. Doom started speedrunning and it, it created high speed multiplayer co-op and deathmatch and free distribution with shareware modding an open game that everybody can modify and you can actually make levels and sell them and make money off of them and it was just at its core a really fun solid game. <laughs>